Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota, produced by Lakeland PBS with host Bethany Wesley. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service, tax preparation for businesses and individuals, online at NiswaTax.com. Hello, I'm Bethany Wesley, and this is Lakeland Currents. In 2017, Minnesota celebrated its highest percentage of high school graduates on record. That same year, the graduation rate at Bemidji High School hit a 15-year high. But is it enough? That record-setting statewide graduation rate was just under 83%, and at Bemidji High School, it was 88%. A former university professor and area principal has been challenging the greater Bemidji community to consider what happens with the remaining 12 to 17% of students, those who don't graduate. John Eggers, who you will hear from momentarily, has been working to mobilize the community to support Project Graduate 100% an initiative aimed at achieving a 100% graduation rate in Beltrami County. Tonight, I welcome John Eggers to the show to talk to us about how Project Graduate works and why he believes a 100% graduation rate is possible. Welcome. Thank you, Bethany. As we get started, John, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in terms of what you did in education? Well, uh, before that, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Lakeland Current and you for having me on this program. On behalf of my advisory board at Red Lake and also here in Bemidji, we appreciate this opportunity to bring this word about 100% to Beltrami County residents and really residents uh, throughout the state. You know? mm -hmm. Well, it, it all started uh, about 10 years ago when I had this idea of, of, of taking a class out to area schools that would focus on helping their, quote, at-risk kids graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. And I did this through Northwest Tech where I was teaching at the time. The class uh, was a one credit uh, high school class and it also gave them one credit college class for completing the class. And we worked in several schools for two years and as a result of that class, I felt that I really wasn't touching enough students so we, we changed directions a little bit and since that time we went from a, a teacher training the trainers uh, type class to uh, having se several symposiums uh, here in Bemidji we held for educators, community leaders and students uh, to now this idea that we could really need to focus on all of our students, 100% of our students to graduate, but we need to go in a different direction. And that is rather than work with schools, we need to work with community. So this is a community-based action program. Okay. So you've been both a teacher, professor, you also were a principal. Yes. So mm -hmm. what did you see in a school setting right. that led you to kind of start, maybe it's time to think outside right. the box. Right. Well. Because schools have been trying to graduate 100% of our students for about 200 years, ever since the first public school started in, in Massachusetts in 1830, uh, no one has really done it, you know, which is interesting because every student has the capability of graduating from high school. So why haven't we done it? And in fact, our schools right now are probably the best that they've ever been. And every school is trying to do something to get every student to graduate. That is 100% of our students to graduate but we still haven't turned the corner, and why is that? Well, I think it's because we really haven't mobilized the entire community. So it's not just educators' responsibility to have students graduate, it's the whole community's responsibility to have all students graduate. And when we do that, we can accomplish this, which seems like a very arduous task, but we can do it. Interesting. So tell me a little bit about how it works. What is it that you're asking communities to do? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it started uh, a little over a year ago, um, actually not a year ago, at Red Lake when I went to the Red Lake Tribal Council because I was principal at Red Lake High School for several years in the 80s and 90s. And the graduation rate of Native American students is low as it is for African Americans, Hispanic Americans. And I went to them with the idea that because it is so low, we, we need to really do something different that is really innovative outside the box challenges everybody, so let's, let's call for a 100% graduation rate of all the students at Red Lake, but to do that, we have to mobilize the community to do it. It's not a school thing, it's a community thing. And I didn't think they would support it, but they did, and so that's how we got started. And so since that time, I went to Bemidji because in that, in that resolution said that we're going to help all Red Lake students graduate, 
And of course, we have Red Lake students not only in Bemidji, but in Kellier and Black Deck and, and Clearbrook and those communities as well. So I went to the, to the Bemidji um, City Council. Actually, the first group I approached in Bemidji was the Bemidji Lions Club, and they supported it 100%. And then I went to Bemidji City Council, and they supported it. And since that time, other agencies in Bemidji have supported this resolution, as well as the Beltrami County Commissioners have supported it, which is amazing. So now you have probably the only county in the state of Minnesota, if not in the United States, that has supported a 100% graduation rate for all of its students. Tell me generally what the reaction has been. Have you gotten the reaction? Like, why is this not staying in the schools? Why are no. you asking community? Have you? Yeah, you know, it's funny. When I go out and speak with groups, they all, of course, like the idea. I mean, we all want our, all of our kids to graduate 100%. And, and there really isn't a whole lot of questions, but I see a lot, a lot of dumbfounded looking faces. Like, how, how is this possible to graduate 100% of our students? So I kind of think they're thinking, this can't work, you know, this can't work, but we'll support it anyway. Well, it can work because if we can, for example, if we can, if we can cure polio 100%, you know, we can certainly do this. If we can have all of our people wearing seat belts, and most do, we can certainly do this. If we can get every kid to say please and thank you, we can certainly graduate all of our students. Right? So, uh, so the reaction has been that we'll support it. It sounds good. Let's give it a try. Why not? You know, why not do it? Okay. So, it's fair to say, of course, all students are different to a degree, right? Yeah. Different interests, Absolutely. different strengths. Absolutely. Yep. Um, does it make sense to ask that every single student be committed mm -hmm. enough to graduate from high school? Well, yeah, I would, uh, a lot of people ask that same question. In fact, I was just uh, speaking with someone from the League of Women's Voters here in, in Bemidji. It just called me up recently, a great organization, by the way, and wanted to get on board with 100% too. And, and they were asking too, well, is really, can every student graduate? So like we all have, every student has the capability to graduate. And so if, if they do have the capability, I mean, no one is, unless, the, unless their brain is damaged in some way due to an accident or on drugs, they all have the capability to graduate from high school. And so if they have the capability, then why can't we, in this rich nation, do it? Why can't we do that? So we, we should be able to do that with all the talent we have in schools and the communities and if we all support it, we can do this. Okay. So I heard you mention earlier that you have some advisory boards, mm -hmm. right? You've yeah. got two? Two advisory boards, one in, uh, one in Red Lake and one in Bemidji. Okay, yes. mm -hmm. and what do they, what purpose well, they serve? Well, when I first recruited them, I said, I want somebody to shoot from the hip, to give me straightforward advice, suggestions, <laughs> without, <laughs> you know, without feeling that you owe me anything. You know? So do that. And so I recruited some people here in Bemidji uh, and, uh, and also in Red Lake, same idea. And what they do is that um, it's a board that uh, we meet uh, probably once a month and, uh, or more, and, they, and I tell them what the progress is, what we're doing, and, and what our next step should be, and they give me advice on things like the brochures that we have, and the, now we're going to put out a, a window decal to put on businesses that, that support it, and so it's advice, uh, but they will begin doing more work, I hope, when we have to take these window decals around to businesses and ask them for the support too. But so right now, it's a, a board that gives advice and suggestions. Yeah. But then I would also imagine they're champions for the, for Absolutely. the initiative, right? Absolutely. You're also going out and reaching. Absolutely, yeah, okay. we do that, yeah. So you're going to these groups, or the groups in some case, the League of Women Voters, right. reach right. out to you, right. and they have what, a resolution that they sign on to? Well, initially, we wanted them to pass a resolution that would really show that they're committed to 100%. And we still have some, some people that uh, we need to connect with to do that. Uh, for example, we hope to get the support of Sanford uh, Hospital, Sanford Clinic. You know, they employ about 2,000 people. Think about if, if, uh, if each of those 2,000 employees went out and contacted two or three other people, whether it be an adult or a young person, you know, that would certainly help the whole, whole cause. And we're also trying to, uh, working with the Evergreen uh, House, and hope we, we hope they get on board, Headwater Science Center. So there's three or four big organizations like that. But we've contacted enough already to say that now it's time just to go around door to door, contact businesses, and say, would you support it? If you do, here's a decal, and here's what you need to do to support it. Okay, so. and what are you asking in return? Well, what is it that you're asking them to that's, do? That's the best thing about this. Um, as an educator, I realize that if I were to have created a program that was costly, no one would have brought it because schools don't have any money. They're trying to get money. They don't have any money to do things. 
Also, if I would have created a program that was, it took a two-week orientation, two-week train-to-trainer type thing to do it, they wouldn't have bought that either. Same thing with businesses when they bought it. So the program we have is very simple. You just have to pass a 100% resolution, or at least believe in it, support it. And the reason why it has to be 100% is because we don't want to let any kid believe that they're not part of that 100%. You know? A lot of kids who are failing in school don't feel that really sometimes don't feel that the school really is meant for them. So when we're talking about 100%, we're talking about every student in the school that we can help and that we expect to graduate. So it has to be 100%. It can't be 85%, 90%, and so on. It has to be 100%. And plus, there's something about just the idea of 100% that resonates with people better than, let's say, 90%. Right? So that's the first step. The second step is you just have to go out and spread the word to as many people as you can. Like, Bethany, when you see people in the church or in the, in the food store, young people, ask them about, you know, what are you going to do when you finish school? And are you going to school? What are you doing now? That sort of conversation. But, and so it gets in the minds of the kids that this is a mindset to graduate, just like when you graduated and when I graduated. It was a mindset. No one really had to kick us in the butt to do it. We just did it because there was no other choice for us. We just did it. You know. And then the third step is to do it, and a big part is to do it relentlessly. So once you adopt the 100% graduation goal, you just can't forget about it. You still have to spread the word, and you have to do it relentlessly. And I suppose that is the, probably the most challenging part about this. So when I go out and talk to groups about this, yeah, oh, John, we're for it. You know, it's really good. It sounds good. We'll do it. You know, but will you do it? I mean, so you support 100%, but are you going to are you going to know contact young people, and are you going to do it relentlessly? So that's really that's really why we need something in front of the people all the time, uh, whether it be a button, a bumper sticker. And I'm thankful for the Bemidji uh, Pioneer to put in my weekly column a little box in there in my column that talks about 100%. Oh, okay. So it's in the paper every week. Yeah. Because it's easy to take these resolutions to a group, like who's not right. going to support 100% right. graduation rate, right. Right? right? But it's the fact that you want them to keep bringing it back up over key. and over again. Right. Right. Okay. And, and, and once that happens, and once that happens, it becomes like, it becomes a habit or a ritual. You see, and it becomes like saying please and thank you. you know, so it doesn't even like a student, a young person won't even think of not graduating, just like you and I. Uh, that this graduation from high school is something that, well, it's something that I do. You know. okay. and so in this sense, we're really helping the schools out. We're trying to, first of all, we're trying to mobilize the entire community rather than just maybe a segment of the community. Uh, and also we're trying to instill in the minds of kids that they need to graduate from high school. Okay. I want to go back to something you said just a few minutes yeah, ago. You yeah. said that some students who struggle in school for whatever reason right. sometimes don't feel that school is made for them, that they're not a fit for school. So right. is that something you heard from students while you were teaching, like the at-risk kids through, right. your, through your class earlier? Right. Or where did yeah. you kind of start well, to come? Well, when you work with um, kids as much as I did over those 53 years in education, you hear a lot of things about why kids drop out, why kids leave school, why they don't like school. There's never really any one reason why students uh, leave school early without their diploma. It could be because they do find school boring. That's a reason. It could, it could be because that maybe they feel bullied in school. That's a reason. It could be because they maybe have a job after school and they have to get the job. That's the reason why they leave school. It could be because they don't have any support from the parents. That no one really pushes them. So there's a variety of reasons why they leave school. And, uh, and schools you know, are doing, I think, pretty good. You know, they don't have enough counselors that touch at all kids. This is why everybody in the community really needs to be a counselor to kids and tell kids that you can do it, you can go to school, you, read, you, can, you, you have the ability. Getting a high school diploma is your number one priority. You need to do that. And so if we have everybody doing that, think about what that would mean, I mean, to kids. I mean, they, if that's the only message they're hearing, then I don't see any other option other than just keep on going through school. I understand that you've been going to civic groups. You've gone to like the council, the right. county board. We talked about that, right. the food shelf, things like that. Yep. You also mentioned you went to like the hospital. Right. Um, some right. of the employers, I think First National Bank, Bank. perhaps yep. was signed on. Yep. So right now you're really targeting adults, right? Is, do you think at this stage you're really hitting the adults well, more so than the kids themselves? Great question. Um, when I envisioned this again, um, it started out this way that first I had to contact the community leaders and the community leaders if you want to put this under um, let's say an umbrella first you have the for example in in Red Lake it's the Bemidji Tribal Council they're really the community leaders of of Red Lake Nation 
and here in Bemidji, it's the Bemidji City Council, which are the community leaders. So, and I felt that if I didn't get the support of the leadership, then this place, then, then 100% isn't going to go any place. So it has to start out with the community leaders first. And that's why I went to Lions, to Rotary, to the hospital, to uh, First National Bank, to churches, this sort of thing, trying to recruit the community leaders first and then work on down towards then the next uh, level would be the parents and then the students and then the educators. Okay. So. All right. You talked about all the groups you've gone to. You haven't right. mentioned schools specifically. No. So are right. schools involved with this? Well, I haven't approached them on purpose because uh, they're not, they weren't initially intended to be approached initially because I felt if I, if I went to a schools first and asked them to propose 100% graduation rate, I know about educators. They're very independent people. They're very pragmatic people. And they say, well, John, that really sounds good, but you know, we're going to stick with just a 90% or 85% graduation rate. That we can, we can probably achieve that. We're not sure we can achieve 100%. So if they would have said no, and then I would have went to the Bemidji City Council or the, or the Red Lake Travel Council and said, well, and they would have asked me, well, John, how did the schools feel about this? They said, well, they didn't think they could do it. So, no, I had to start out with the, with the, with the leadership first in the community okay. and, and, and go down towards the schools. And we're about at the point now where we're ready to approach Bemidji schools and Red Lake schools and ask them to support 100%. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel the schools are doing a good job teaching the kids? Are, no. It's not necessarily that you think the schools are failing no, no, the students. No way. I mean, the schools I said earlier, the schools, we probably have the best schools in the United States now that we've ever had. You know. And uh, if you look at the students, in, whether it be in music or in sports or in drama, I mean, they're just top-notch kids, you know. So and those kids will all graduate from high school. We're not worried about those kids. They're going to do it because they have this mindset to graduate. It's the kids that aren't in those organizations that I'm most concerned about. So where are those kids? And if a kid, if a student uh, has been failing, let's say, most of our school life, why would they continue in school? I mean, who wants to, who wants to do that? And that's another reason why kids drop out because, well, I, you know, I really haven't done, in 10 years of school, I really haven't done very well, probably because maybe their own problem, but nevertheless, they haven't done very well, and so I'm not gonna continue anymore. Um, but one way that, that, schools can, that, that, that schools can perhaps do a better job of is that when I was a principal, I think a lot of teachers got the idea that graduating kids, the high school graduation rate was really the responsibility of the counselors and the principal. You know. And they didn't see that they're teaching a class in math, for example, might or should connect to that graduation. You know, I'm, just, I'm kind of generalizing here, but, mm -hmm. and so, but I think so teachers need to, need to get it in their heads that every time they approach kids, they need to ask themselves, what did I do today to help my kids graduate? And when they begin doing that consistently, whether they be teaching 10th grade or first grade or kindergarten, then kids will begin getting the idea that, yes, okay, I'm in second grade, third grade, you know, I need to graduate from high school. So they can begin doing that a lot earlier than what they're doing. Another thing they can do too is that they can take out their high school diploma and put that on the wall as opposed to their master's degree diploma or their BS diploma so kids can see that, oh, you earned a high school diploma too. And teachers can talk about the struggles they had in high school and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. So, so teachers, I don't want to say that teachers are, you know, we're doing, we, do, we just need to do more than what we're doing now. Okay. Yeah. So as you go out to these community groups, right. do you ask them that same question then too, in terms of what are you doing to help area kids or your own kids or whoever help graduate? Uh, probably not enough. Probably not enough. I should ask that more because um, I do go out uh, thinking that they're gonna, I'm going to be bombarded with questions about this kind of crazy idea. Uh, but they all seem to support it. And I get the idea that, you know, Maybe Eggers is right. Maybe we can do this. You know, maybe we can graduate all of our students if we all get behind it. And, and I hope they are talking to their kids and their grandkids and their nieces and nephews about graduating from high school. And so. Okay. So these groups sign on. They say they support it. They're, right. they're in your corner. They right. cheer it on. You're not necessarily asking them to set up touring programs at their local church or anything like, like that. that. You're not asking no. for a check. No. You just want them to keep getting Spread the message the out. Get the message out. That's it. And if okay. I did do that, it would be, again, going against the... One of the reasons uh, why this is, I think, can be successful is because it doesn't take, doesn't cost anything, you see, which is big. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take a whole lot of organization, you know, nothing. Just go out and tell kids, tell people, you need to graduate. That's all you have to do. And then you have to do it relentlessly. You know. 
So. And once you put that idea in people's heads, yeah, right. like me, we've been preparing for this program for a while now, yeah, right. you start thinking about how many teenish kids you run into. I don't have teen kids at right, home, right. but I happen to run into quite a lot All throughout the, time. the week. All the time, yep. And I started to think about that once right. we started planning for this program. So right. as you talk to adults, do you, are you hoping then they think similar absolutely, thoughts? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, when I do, so I do have an update that I send out like every two weeks to okay. people like you. I'll be sending you the update too. And about uh, about what's been happening and what you, more you can do, um, so we're doing things like that too. But that really is a concern: is that we have to do it relentlessly, and I really mean relentlessly, just like the way we teach our own kids to say please and thank you and pick up their clothes. And so it's a relentless it's a battle. You know. Okay. We focused a lot on Bemidji and Red Lake. Is that kind yeah. of your focus area right now? Initially, it was Red Lake, and it still is Red Lake. I'll be going tomorrow to they have a student leadership a conference there tomorrow. I'll have a, I'll have a table there, uh, handing out, talking to kids. Mm -hmm. And I, and just this morning, I was at the talk with the hospital staff there. So I'll be doing that. And then, uh, so whenever I get a chance to talk with groups, I'll do that. We have some meetings scheduled with other groups in town. I hope the. Bemidji uh, women's voters will call me up and have me talk with them. I always like to talk with people. Um, and so we have groups scheduled. Okay. Mm -hmm. You talked about student leadership in Red Lake. Yeah. I know in Bemidji yeah. they have the Bemidji right. Youth Advisory Commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kind of have these groups of student right. leaders. Yep. Have they also signed on? Are they? Not yet, they okay. haven't. Uh, I did speak, I did have five minutes one time <laughs> to talk to the Bemidji School Board. And, uh, and, and members of the school board had, you know, know me and I've heard about 100%, they support it and so on. But and they do have a, one of the school board members is in charge of a student uh, leadership group, and, uh, okay. and we need to connect more with that. And, uh, and I, will, I will get back to the school board again for, I hope, a longer period of time you know, than five okay. minutes. Right. They don't come with funding. So where no. is your funding coming from? Do you have funding? Is this a volunteer? Well, uh, you know, we do have uh, brochures that we pass out, flyers we pass out. And I did uh, publish a book on 100%, so if people are interested in the book, okay. they can contact me and get the copy of the book, which tells all about it. And uh, so far, it's just come right out of my pocket. Okay. No, that's where it's come from. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we talked earlier, I said at the very beginning, I think Bemidji District is at a 88, give or take, percent right. for graduation, mm -hmm. which is actually yeah. a high. It's actually pretty something good. to celebrate, that's good. right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. do you have benchmarks along the way that you're going to be measuring, no. John, or how? Well, I, I think I was just telling one of the uh, workers this morning at the Red Lake Hospital, and she asked me, well, what will be an indication that you're making progress on this? Right. I said, well, when you talk to somebody in the street, whether it be Red Lake or Bemidji, and you ask them, what is the goal, what is the graduation rate goal in Bemidji or Beltrami County, and they say 100%, then you know we're making progress. That's anybody on the street. Right now, you can ask anybody on the street in Bemidji or Red Lake or Black Lake or Motley or whatever, that what is your graduation rate goal in this community anyway? I don't think. Okay. Most could tell you what it is. They should know that. They should know what the goal is. So now it is 100%. If they can tell us that, tell me that, then we're making progress. You know. It's a cohesive so. community message, right? Absolutely. To its youth. Right. Okay. Right. Any ideas or guesses on how long you think it might take? Well, when, that's <laughs> when, uh, when people ask me that question, how long will it take, I said, we can do it in a year. I think we can do it in a year. And the reason I say that is because I think if, if everybody did that, you see, if everybody was relentless about it, we could do it in a year. I mean, if a kid is programmed to graduate from high school, they're going to graduate. But if they're not programmed to graduate, they're not going to graduate. So but if everybody's telling kids to graduate, we can do that in a year. And then, and then they might say, well, John, what if we can't do it in a year? Well, I say we can do it in a year. So you have to really think, you have to be very positive about this. And kids will see right through you if you don't think, we can do it, you know. If I tell a kid, you know, well, I, I really think you can graduate. I, I, you know, I, if you really try, you know, I, but no, I want to, you can do it. I mean, you can do it, and you're going to do it, so. At what age do kids need to start getting that message? Well, I think third grade. I think third grade, because when I was at the Native Wars Charter School there, and I could begin telling kids, telling already that some kids were going to struggle unless they got help. They were behind in reading, behind in math. Maybe their attendance wasn't so good in school. They may have been a discipline problem okay. in school. So right away, we can begin to identify those kids. And one thing about this uh, program here is that once the community gets behind it, we're going to have fewer of those kids that are in that area. And so teachers will have fewer kids to, to, to work on, I mean, to really work hard on getting those kids to graduate and to bring up to grade level. So. Okay. What do you still need from the community? 
Well, this summer we're going to have a uh, table at the Beltrami County Fair. No. And uh, they're going to put on the, bill, the billboard outside the fairgrounds, something to do with 100% graduation rate. It's going to go into all of those catalogs that the fair board sends out. The 17,000 catalogs will be in there. So the word just has to get out yet. There's nowhere near we don't have the word out there yet to everybody. And, uh, but if everybody starts spreading the word, you see, and I hope that all churches would buy into it. I hope I, as a result of this, uh, this program that people will contact me and say, John, we'd like to get on board too. You know, we'd like to do this for you. So for Bemidji, for the kids of Bemidji. Mm -hmm. see, so, yeah. okay. Well, thank you for joining us, John. Yes, right. I appreciate you getting enough information about this. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to learn more about this project or if you would like to reach out and get involved, you can contact either the Facebook page listed below here or email address or website address. So John will, I'm sure, be happy to take the call. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join me next time.